Super excited to announce the next virtual speaker. I've got to know him really well over the last year. He was at the last 8%. Dude rolled up in a freaking McLaren outside of the Statler Hotel in Dallas. Dude is a machine, a freak at sales, at relationship building, at recruiting, at scaling. He recruited 69 people in his first 60 days as an insurance agent, period. Never done insurance before. He wrote, I, I believe, 60K in his first eight weeks. I'm telling you, the dude's done some insane stuff. Good buddy of mine. We talk often. I love this guy. And he has a passion for the industry and a story like nobody else. He's going to share it in Vegas. Nate, come on now. You ready, brother? Let's, 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 let's get after it. For those that haven't heard, this dude can flat out speak and train probably one of the biggest dudes that isn't even well known yet. That's about to change. Let's bring out my good buddy to the virtual stage. Please welcome Mr. Nate Offer. Hey, Cody, I really appreciate you having the opportunity to get on today and, and speak to 8% Nation. I mean, what a lineup of incredible speakers that we've had on so far and what, what's in store here for the rest of the day on a Saturday. Um, I'm just honored and privileged to even be in the presence of such powerful people and successful people, even like yourself. And it wasn't too long ago I was sitting in, in, in the front row of the first 8% Nation event that I went to that you guys had here in Dallas. Um, and what an amazing experience, getting a chance to meet you personally and, and Ramiz and have an opportunity to have Coach come into my life and, and start coaching me as well. So um, I'm just real, really excited. I can't wait for the event that's going to be coming up. And I appreciate all you guys taking your time on a, on a Saturday morning, afternoon and, 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 you know, growing. You know, John Maxwell always says you're either growing in, through life or you're going through life. And my problem when I went broke for years is I was just going through life, right? I didn't know any better. You know, I grew up in a home where I was told, go to school, get good grades, the better grades you get, the better job you're going to get, you know, and I was following that plan. And I just wasn't having the success that I thought I would have. I actually dropped out of college twice. You know, here's my sisters, you know, imagine this. I was sort of the black sheep of the family, or let's just call it what it is. I was the black sheep of the family. And I had three sisters and, and they were all super smart, Val Victorian, Magnum Chin, Cum Laude, you know, the whole deal, right? And uh, I was able to memorize fairly well. So I did okay in grade school and, and, and in high school. But, you know, in college, it was a little bit different thing. Um, <laughs> I actually ended up, like I said, dropping out twice. And I'll never forget because my mom, um, I don't know if you guys have it, like a refrigerator mom. My mom was a huge refrigerator mom where like she had like all the stuff posted on there, right? Like where you had, uh, you know, the awards and the accolades and the grades and the ribbons and, you know, number one in this and number one in that, and, you know, 4.0 and everything else. And, you know, it was pretty much even with my three sisters and me as I was growing up until I got to college. And then it kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And I'll never forget, I came home from college one time and... <laughs> my mom bless her heart right um on the front of the refrigerator there is my one sister all decked out with all her accolades and everything else and my other sister my third sister and she had a picture of me it was my um senior picture and was up there in the right corner of the refrigerator and it said uh, pray for him <laughs> so um after i dropped out of college the second time i got introduced to a company and I'll never forget because a friend of mine was all excited and hyped up and said, oh my God, you got to come down here and check this out. There's this guy who's a multimillionaire. He's helping people make millions of dollars and, you know, they're saving the planet, saving the earth. And I was in a situation, I was naive. I didn't even know what he was talking about. And he's like, I want you to come down to this office and check this out. And so I went down to the office and um, I show up and there's a bunch of excited people there and they're all happy, you know, and there's a room full of people and there's a big line of products that were up there. And I was like, oh my gosh, what did I come into? But I, I'd never seen anything like it before. So they sat me down, they did the presentation, and they were talking about the environment and the environmentally safe products and water filtration and air filtration. And, you know, at the time I didn't, I didn't care. You know, I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, like environment wasn't a big issue. It wasn't a, a, a big word or it wasn't on people's mind at that time. Um, and so they actually were smart and they squeezed me in, in, in the middle row between all these other people that were out there. And so I didn't have an opportunity to leave or I probably would have. And um, as I sat there, I just, wasn't really connecting with them until I started talking about financial independence and talking about the money. And then they wheeled in this, this cart, right? You know, back in the day, they wheeled in this cart with a, with a TV. No, it wasn't black and white. It was color. Um, and they stuck a VHS tape in there. And it had story upon story upon story of other people that had success 
that were broke pot and pan door door salesmen and, and social workers and you know preschool teachers and all these other people that didn't come from a, a, a great background who were earning millions of dollars and that were successful. And I'll never forget the, the the at the very end of it, there was this guy who got on there and he was extremely captivating and he was sitting there with his arms crossed in front of you know this super expensive car and said, "Where are you going to be in the next five years if you keep doing what you've been doing? And where could you be in the next five years?" If you follow the man who built the path, who built the track to follow, taking other people down that track, where would you be, wind up, if you just did what they did? And where would you be in the next five years if you keep doing what you've been doing? And a light bulb went off in my head. And I think, wow, you know, here I grew up in a home where I didn't have a lot of money. And so, you know, money isn't everything until you don't have it, right? It's kind of like air. <laughs> you know, we don't have money. You start to realize that, you know, hey, I want to get to a point where I don't have to suffer financially, where every decision isn't made upon how much money's in the bank. And I don't have to read off of the, you know, the, the right side of the menu versus the left, you know, when you're looking at the price versus stuff. And I got excited about it, right? I said, I got an opportunity to get involved with something where I can build something and I can employ the efforts of other people and I can earn income whether I'm working or not. And I got involved and there were people around me that were having tremendous success and I failed miserably. I mean, it was years, guys. I was in a situation, I mean, I literally was broke. I don't know if you guys ever know I'm talking about broke, like ramen noodle broke, like where, you know, it, it's a different, it's steak one night, chicken the other, but it's just a different packet on the ramen noodles that you're sprinkling on. So, um, I mean, I was really, really broke. I was hopping from one friend's couch to another friend's couch. I, I would literally go to the grocery store to pretend to shop so I could eat a meal. Um, and it got to a point where, I started to really doubt myself um, because when you have other people in your life and you're watching them have success doing the same thing you're trying to do and you're not, then it, you kind of look and go, well, it's got to be me. Maybe I'm not cut out for success. Maybe I'm too stupid to have success. I, I dropped out of college twice. Maybe there's some things I need to know. And it wasn't until I had a mentor come into my life who changed me completely, right? He took everything that I thought and threw it out the window, right? Heard him, money doesn't grow on trees. We all heard that, money doesn't grow on trees. He said, yeah, I bet you did. they never told you where it did grow, did they? I said, no, he goes, it grows in other people's pockets, Nate. And if you take money out of someone's pocket without giving them something in return, that's called stealing. But if you give them a product or a service in return for their money, that's called capitalism. That's called profit. I was like, whoa, I never learned that in school. Right. And so I had this mentor come into my life and I had an opportunity to start working with him on an individual basis. And it was funny because I never made over $3,000 a month ever in the history of the company that I was involved with for four years, four years, people were earning millions of dollars. And I never made more than $3,000 a month. And I started learning from this gentleman and I, my paycheck literally went from 3000 a month to over 20,000 a month in 90 days, same product, same compensation plan, nothing changed except I had an opportunity to learn from somebody who was willing to teach me the keys to success. And I'll never forget, because he said, hey, listen, if you work with me, I'm gonna teach you something that will revolutionize, revolutionize your business. It'll revolutionize your life. And I'm gonna teach you this one thing. And I'm telling you guys, when he taught me this one thing, it was night and day. People ask me all the time, how'd you go from 3,000 a month to 20,000 a month? This one, one thing, this one thing he taught me. And it changed, I went from being broke to making millions of dollars. I went from being unconfident to confident. This one thing got me better in my relationships. It taught me what I needed to do, what that missing piece of the puzzle was in order for me to have success. Just the one thing. And he said, Nate, I'm gonna teach you this one thing under one condition. I said, okay, sir. You can't tell anybody else. I said, okay. So I just wanted to say thank you for having me on tonight uh, or today and, and giving an opportunity to, to speak in. What? what I think, what are the comments coming in? What's the one thing? What's the one thing? Well, I, I gave him a condition. I, I'll teach you one thing without, you can't share with anybody else. I said, okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. Guys, there is no one thing. I just made it up, right? I made it up to you go, because that's what we all think, right? We think we need one line, one, one, one thing that can get that sale there, one book that we read, one conference that we attend, one uh, mentor that comes into our life. Guys, there is no one thing. I learned so much information from my mentor. I got poured into him on a daily basis, sometimes, you know, on, on, you know, weekly, monthly time, where I had an opportunity to pick his brand and learn from him and books that I read, Think and Grow Rich and How to Win Friends and Influence People and, and seminars I attended and trainings I went to and videos that I watched. There was no one thing. And that's the problem, guys. We're all looking for that one thing that's gonna make or break us, that one thing that's gonna change our business. 
And I learned from him very quickly that there is no one thing. But as my journey grew and as I got more successful and as I started to look back, I realized there is one thing. And most of us fail to miss it, right? We're all looking for that one person in our organization that can make us wealthy if we're building an organization. We're looking for that, that one person or that one deal that can make us 100000 or a million dollars. And what most people fail to do, including me, is realize that one thing, you got to look in the mirror. And that one thing between you making it to the top of Success Mountain or quitting is you. It's me. And my mentor drew something out for me I'll never forget, guys. Changed my whole entire perspective. And he said, look, if you look at any company, if you look at any opportunity, if you look at insurance, whether it's property and casualty insurance, final expense, mortgage protection, right? If you look at this, right, there's the product, okay? And he said the product, they don't have pink policies for, for, for women and, and, and uh, you know, blue ones for boys. We all get to work with the same carriers. We all have access to the same product, right? He said there's the compensation plan, right? They all pay the same. If you're in a company and you're working to a certain level and they get promotions based on a certain level, whether you're fat, skinny, Paul, purple, blue, yellow, what your religion is, no matter what, what you are, you have the same opportunity, equal opportunity. So this is a constant. This is a constant. And this is the variable. And he said, the only variable between you having success and not is what are you working on the hardest in your business, Nate? Are you worried about the leads? Are you worried about the product? If only I had this lead or if only that happened or this doesn't work. Are you worried about the compensation plan? If only I had a higher contract level, if only I was at X percent versus that percent. If there's people in your opportunity, people in your, your business, people in your field that are having success, in the company that you're working with and you aren't the harsh reality is that you got to work harder on you than you have to worry about whatever else is doing over here and that was a pivotal point in my life where my life changed because no longer could i have excuses for not having success because i was always looking outside of myself to find that one thing man i, I knew i had to find that one thing that could change my business and it wasn't until I had a realization that the one thing was me. The one thing is you. When you really wake up in the morning and look yourself in the mirror and realize, you know what? I have all the tools that I need to create success in my life. You'll be amazed what will happen after. I know it sounds too simple. I know it sounds too good to be true. But when I walked into the insurance industry and I had zero background in the insurance industry and I was literally calling my upline, literally calling my upline to find out what DL meant on an application. And he's like, uh, driver's license. Nate. <laughs> That's how bad I was. But I was able to realize, hey, you know what? If a hundred men and women are doing it, so can I. If a thousand men and people, women are doing it, so can I. If 10,000 men and women are doing it, what's my problem? The problem's me. So when I walked into the insurance industry without any experience, I know Cody loves to talk about my story and how I wrote $50,000 my first month and 85,000 in the first week and $40,000 deposit in my bank account my first six weeks. It wasn't because I became a master of insurance. It's because I realized I had an opportunity to learn from people who already had success and I had everything that I needed to become successful because I spent 10 years working on me. The only variable and the only variable you guys have, whether you're where you're at, where you want to be in life in your business right now, or where you feel that like you were like me for four years struggling and wanting to kill everybody else around you that was having success when you weren't is us. And I can't stress it enough. When I work with Marlon Faulkner, I said, Hey buddy, what's your growth plan? He was failing miserably. He was broke. He was homeless. He wasn't having, he was watching me have success and he wasn't having success. And I said, you're either going through life, which I love this, or you're growing through life. What's your growth plan? And he initiated a growth plan. It was his birthday just a couple days ago. And it was incredible. It was awesome. We had a um, Zoom meeting. And uh, we had our entire organization on here. And we surprised him, which is good. It's hard to surprise Marlon Faulkner. And we spent about 30 minutes um, 
sharing with him the impact that he's had on their lives. And to hear the people that he works with on a daily basis pour in about the effect that he had on their life was such an amazing experience. And at the very end, I pulled up his story and I had emails that were saved because I do something called the Marlin, the untold story. And if you guys are coming to 8% Nation on Sunday, we're going to have a SWAT event, strategic wealth accumulation tactics event the day after, which you're all invited to. Uh, we can post that up when, that, when it gets to that point. You can all come there. We're going to go talk about the Marlin, the untold story. And I looked at Marlon as he was surrounded on this video chat with hundreds of, of agents and, and we spent, you know, 30, 40 minutes talking about what impact he had in his life. And I pulled up a, a paper that showed his birthday five years ago. And it was a series of emails, credit card declined for leads, credit card declined for leads, credit card declined for leads. And on his birthday, five years ago, on April 20th, five years ago, he got kicked out of America for not paying a debt because he couldn't afford to. He got kicked out of one of our other core carriers because he didn't pay a debt he couldn't afford to. He got put on Vector and over $1,600 of his debt rolled up to me. I remember I had a conversation very well that we had with him. And I had a choice to make. Was I going to, and people were telling me, terminate him, get him out of here. It's not only going to be a problem. It's not going to be worth it. I remember Marlon Faulkner telling me, do what you have to do, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm never going to quit. Because you taught me that the only variable here is me. And I know I can become a better me. And the reason I'm getting emotional is because five years later, after him working on himself, he had impacted hundreds of people's lives where they were crying and in tears and said, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I wouldn't have more time with my baby right now if it wasn't for you. And I said, Marlon, don't ever forget this and I'll tell you the same thing. If you ever think about quitting it's just not your decision. Imagine how many people's lives would have not been affected in a positive way if Marlon thought that quitting was a choice that only affected him. Because for him making the decision not to quit had a ripple effect that will last for generations. So I know a lot of you guys may be in a situation where I was like years ago or Marlon was just a handful of years ago where you feel like throwing your arms up in the air and this is not going to work. But I truly believe five years from now when you look back and you're able to look behind you of all the people's lives that you had a direct impact and effect on because you had the grit to push through and you were able to make a decision, not just based on yourself, but for future, other people's future is on the line, not to quit. I wish I had Marlon on the day because he called me after the call. And he said, that was the most powerful thing that's ever happened in my life. And thank you for sharing that with me on my birthday. I'm just honored to have been asked, asked to be on this virtual 8% uh, Nation call today. And I appreciate you guys giving me a time to talk a little bit. And I'm super excited to bring a lot of this information that I did learn from my mentor to 8% when I have a chance to speak there. So thank you again, Cody. Thank you for putting this together. Thank you for helping impact so many people's lives in this industry. You are a godsend, and I uh, just appreciate being on today. Thank you so much. Nate, 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 Nate. The dude's got it. The dude's got it. Awesome job, buddy. Thank you for being a part of this. May do what, what did you learn? The dude will never quit. That's how passionate he is. What notes did you take? Make sure you're learning, slowing down, taking some notes. I'm just taking all this in. Like I'm super excited for Virtual Land Vegas. Thank you for being on this. Again, almost 10,000 agents register. Thousands are on this. And we're blessed that you are.
appreciate it very much, right? It's only gonna get, it's, it's just gonna keep getting better every time. You watch this video and you wanna learn how to take a live call and transfer it from an opener to a closer, that video is for you. Click on it and I'll see you there. Again, I'm not sure what time you're watching this video, right? Intro, expert, control, qualify, transfer. This is how to effectively transfer a live call from an opener to a closer.